So let's run the request for getting all the bands one more time. And we get the bands and 200 OK. Now let's have a look at headers. And you can see that currently we are getting application JSON. That is our content type. So what happens if we uncheck that and run it again? And we get the same bands and the same JSON result again. And that's because that is our default. So if we do not specify the header, by default we'll get JSON. Now let's enter a specific header for accept. And we're going to accept application JSON. So let's send this. And we get the same result because we specified that we want JSON. So that is correct. Now what if we specify that we want application XML? Click send and we still get the same JSON. So even though we specified a content type that we are not currently supporting, by default it will go back to the JSON because that is our default content type. However, this is not a behavior we want. If the user request a specific content type, in this case XML, and we do not support it, we should return not supported type. Because if we just return JSON, a user cannot do anything with it if he expects XML. We want JSON to be our default if we do not specify any header, but if the user specifies XML, we want to return XML, or if we do not support it, then we want to return not supported status code. So that's one thing we need to fix. And the second thing, we actually can add a support for XML as another format for our API. So let's implement those two things now. To make sure that the user gets a message or a status code that the format is not supported, if the user requests non-supported format, we'll set it up in startup.cs. And we'll set it up in our services for the MVC. Once we set up the MVC, we can specify what we are supporting and what we are not. So here, I'll set up an action. That's going to be a lambda. And here, I will simply say that if the user requests a non-supported format, we will not accept it. So we will not default to JSON. So we'll go to our setup action dot and we'll use the return HTTP not acceptable and we'll set it to true. So let's see if it works. Let's run it and go to our postman and let's request an XML for the application as an accepted header. And you can see now we get not acceptable, meaning XML is not supported. So that is correct. So now let's actually add XML as the supported format. And we'll do it again on our MVC level. We will simply add to it that we support XML serialization. So after our services for MVC are set up, we will also add XML to it. So we will use add XML data contract serializer formatters. So this will add a support for XML. Very simple, just one line. So now let's test this. Let's run it and go back to our postman. And let's get the bands in XML format. And we get all the bands in XML format. So XML is now supported. Now let's run this with the JSON to make sure that it still works. And here it is in JSON format. And now let's uncheck the accept header. And this should default to JSON as well. So let's run this. And it indeed returns JSON. So now Let's try something that is not supported, for example, zip. 
and we get not acceptable status. So our formatting now works correctly. We support JSON and XML and for everything else we return not acceptable. Alright, so our API is coming along nicely, but when we look in our controller, notice that we go to our repo and we get everything back from it. And that's not really a good practice because you also get a lot of data that you don't need. For example, when I go to my band class, I was getting the ID, the name, the date and the genre, but I also was getting the collection of albums that was blank because uh, it's not being populated from our query. So it is a good practice to only return properties that we actually want to return, not just all the properties from the class. And to do that we will use data transfer objects or DTOs. Data transfer objects are basically just classes that only contain properties that we want to return from our API calls. So let's have a look at that next.